Hi, I'm Dr. Steve George, Earth Kind Landscape Specialist with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. I'd like to welcome you to the first in a three-part series featuring the top five small, medium, and large trees. These best of the best trees can be a tremendous help in making your landscape a place of stunning beauty and do so with minimal maintenance. They can definitely enhance your quality of life and improve the environmental health of your landscape. This is going to be lots of fun and very informative, so let's get started. So I want to go over with you uh, my choices for the top five small ornamental trees, and these will be for North Central Texas. Please remember that local recommendations are best, and what follows are my recommendations for the alkaline, that's pH 7.7 to 8.2, that's highly alkaline in my opinion, clay soils of North Central Texas. I was lucky enough to get input from two of my uh, brightest and most experienced colleagues. So with that, these, these recommendations are based on a combined total of 104 years of actual on the ground experience uh, working with and evaluating landscape plants in this region of the state. For other areas of Texas, please contact your county extension agent for their list of recommended landscape plants because their local knowledge is extremely valuable. All right, number five on this list is going to be a surprise to a lot of people. It is Satsuma mandarin, and there is a, a picture of the blossom. They're beautiful blossoms. And there's the fruit, and that's fruit tape. We were growing that in a container uh, on our patio, so you can expect if you, if you follow our suggestions, you can get eight to ten uh, golf ball-sized, very high-quality fruit a year, and folks, you're going to love them. You will love them. All right, Satsuma mandarin, Citrus reticulata is an evergreen. It's about five feet tall, five feet wide, needs to be in full sun, and they have to be grown in a container this far north, and in a container they're going to have moderate water use. And what's so exciting there, the, well, several things, uh, they are the highest quality, most cold tolerant, not cold hardy, but cold tolerant citrus for Texas. They have attractive evergreen foliage, and you saw the beautiful white blooms with a wonderful fragrance. The fruit is easy to peel. It's almost seedless and very sweet. Uh, th these are wonderful fruit. Recommended cultivars are Miho and Sito. Now, I would suggest you grow them in a 20-gallon plastic container because you're going to have to move these indoors anytime it's 27 degrees or colder. That is very important. They make a wonderful focal point on a patio or deck. And this Satsuma info that I've, I've shared with you is copied directly from the Texas Superstar website. You see the link there. They have a, a, a lot of wonderful information on these exciting plants. All right, so other than for Satsuma Mandarin, I have very rigorous performance expectations of, of any tree that's going to be in my top five. And uh, once they're established in a clay or loam soil, and kept uh, protected year-round with three inches of mulch, uh, these trees should be uh, very attractive and give outstanding landscape performance with only two irrigations per year, folks, per year, and no fertilizer and no pesticides. And the trees I'm going to share with you, they can meet these standards. Number four on this list is Mexican plum, and it, you see uh, it's like a cloud of beautiful white blooms. Uh, the scientific name is Prunus uh, Mexicana. It is deciduous. It's about 20 feet tall, 20 feet wide. Grows in full sun to dapple shade and uh, low water use. It, it is a tough plant. Uh, it's covered with white, very fragrant blooms in early spring. And these white blooms are easy to combine with other colors. Uh, now you want to be careful not pl uh, plant them over a sidewalk or patio because uh, the fruit can be a... a uh, messy in that situation. Number three is Vitex. That's a great picture from my colleagues at Oklahoma State. This is this is a wonderful plant. Uh, here's here's a picture of one. It can this can be a large shrub or small tree. Uh, for landscape purposes, uh, I would suggest that this plant be pruned to a multi-trunked tree form. It goes by uh, several uh, different common names, Vitex or Texas Lilac or Chase Tree. 
scientific name is Vitex agnus castus. It is deciduous. Deciduous meaning drops its leaves in the fall, of course. Uh, height 15 feet, width of 15 feet, full sun, uh, medium water use. It flowers in late spring or early summer, and that's really nice because that's a time when few other trees are in bloom. Montrose Purple, Leconte, and Shoal Creek are all Texas superstars, so I would suggest you take a hard look at those. Uh, for more information, go to Texas Superstar website, and it, it will tell you all about these, these uh, Vitex. Number two on the list is Yopon Holly, and boy, this, this is, mm, these are awful good trees. Uh, here's a close-up of the fruit. Yopon Holly, the scientific name is Ilex vomitoria. It is an evergreen, gets about 15 feet tall, 10 feet wide, full sun to moderate shade, uh, low water use. Uh, keep in mind only the female plants produce the fruit. And cultivars that are reported to produce the most fruit include Jewel, Pride of Houston, and Kathy Ann. When you buy a Yopon Holly, I would make sure it has plenty of fruit on it when you buy it. Uh, Pendula is a weeping form that gets 15 to 20 feet tall, and it has a attractive fruit. Uh, now, it's um, reported that if eaten, the fruit can be poisonous to humans, so please keep that in mind. Here's a, a shot of the pendula weeping up on holly. Now that's a small one. They get considerably uh, taller than that, of course. And here's number one on my list. And mm, boy, do I love this tree. It is Oklahoma redbud. And the scientific name is a long one. A Circus canadensis botanical variety Texensis Oklahoma. So this was a selection uh, made and it is from the genetic group of the of the native Texas redbuds. It is deciduous, has a height of 20 feet, width of 15 feet, grows full sun to dapple shade, and low water use. Now this was this uh, the initial plant was found in the Arbuckle Mountains in southern Oklahoma. Blooms in early spring, has darker flowers and beautiful rose magenta color. Uh, very attractive, glossy, heart-shaped leaves, and it's highly recommended by Oklahoma State University, and I highly recommend it as well. Now, for your convenience, here's a list of my top five in order. You can, you can see them there. And what we're trying to help you achieve uh, is a long period of flowering, and you, uh, we want you to have beautiful uh, images for over as much of the growing season as possible. And these trees can certainly deliver that, especially when they're artfully combined with flowering vines and deciduous flowering shrubs and earth kind roses. Now check with your uh, kind extension agent regarding uh, the status is rose rosette a serious problem in your area or not. And also annual and herbaceous perennial flowers. These truly outstanding small ornamental trees can add so much to your enjoyment of your landscape and they're a great fit with our EarthKind Environmental Landscape Management Program as well. I think that you will love them. I know that I certainly do. And please join me next Wednesday, March the 16th, for my video entitled, Top 5 Shade Trees for One-Story Homes.